Hello and welcome to Just Go Places. Um, this is where we talk about food and travel and all things food and travel related. And today we're going to take a look at the Clove Club, which is uh, number 30 something in the top 50 restaurants in the world. Stick with us and we'll show you what you can expect to experience at the Clove Club. <laughs> The decor is all neutrals and tasteful muted shades. Lots of brown. Who said brown was dead? It's definitely not here. This is short and chic. Okay, so in choosing our pairing menus, we have gone with the most indecisive option, which is uh, not picking anything at all, and going with the full tasting menu. And my husband's having the wine tasting pairing and I'm having the um, mixed wine tasting because I can't hold my alcohol. So it'll be four glasses of wine and three of their interesting tea slash juices. It's called a soft pairing. Can I tell you that I am charmed by the clothespin on my little drink? So this is our polo pakora uh, that is made with chickpea flour, chips, milk, yogurt, and Indian spices. So this is homemade taco with mackerel and kimchi. Hmm, yum. <laughs> so another wine from Spain, uh, from Spain, from Rioja. So this is the smoke trout, and I was supposed to have saved the wine for this. See, he's laughing at me because he did save his wine. <laughs> I got to drink extra wine, buddy. So no need to feel so smug in your superiority. With some watercress and some almond milk just underneath it, and with our toasted almonds, which are toasted overnight, and some brown butter. It's cultured butter. I wonder if it's this Latin and Greek, 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 ancient Greek, of course. There goes the cultured bread and butter. <laughs> aubergine is done two different ways. So we take the aubergine and it's been grilled on an open barbecue, so it's um, a slight barbecue flavour. Then we take the aubergine as well and we pour it and create a tartare, a caviar if you will, that sits on top. Um, underneath is a green tomato puree and you also have verbena running through the dish. On the side we have you a goat's cheese. The table to accompany your prawn, we've got the prawn heads that have been deep fried and finished with some uh, devil spices. We've got a little Japanese piece on the side for you to squeeze it on top of the prawn. Okay, so we so this is the next course here, so this is the red mullet. That's been brought over hazel to love it with barbecue oil. On the plate here we've got some green pepper puree with the green pepper stuff with anchovy. And this is what I want fish sauce. Now we have pheasant, this is from Norfolk, um, it is the um, pheasant that we have, so it's been um, um, roasted and then finished off on an overdrive, so you have to do this um, crispy skin. Um, underneath is our um, sorry, chestnut puree and then shavings of chestnut itself, um, Brussels sprouts, grapes and then finished off with um, some chocolate mushrooms. in the Champagne region, so it's Pinot Noir Champagne, which is why it's so dark reddish. It's very pretty. From our barbecue, homemade Venetian sausage, made with the smell of fried dough, homemade barbecue and it's a very light flavor the barbecue. 
So for the venison course, we've got a Cabernet Sauvignon, a cab from Melbourne. It's from Yarra Valley in Australia, just outside of Melbourne. And so here we have pre-dessert to cleanse our palates. So the next course is a uh, your last dessert. It's a uh, big dessert. We're serving uh, things from France, the regional province in the south of France. Uh, they're very sweet and aromatic fruits. Uh, we gently brush them with a reduction of port wine. Underneath there is big compost, toasted sesame seeds, and we finish with a coconut cream. Describe in the order we recommend if you have them. Obviously, you should deviate just very much yourself. And for the macaroons, you have chocolate and cacao dip. There's a shoe pastry bun at the base with a hazelnut frame and then a caramelized hazelnut shard. And then here are speculous biscuits. So, speculous uh, sort of cinnamon spice biscuit. And then it's um, got chocolates and hazelnut wrapped around. By this time, I was so stuffed I could barely move but my husband had coffee and Armagnac to finish a fine dining experience. So we've had a fabulous lunch here at the Cloak Club. Once again, I have to apologize because the sound quality on that varied because I filmed most of it on site. Um, so I just wanted to have a quick overview of what we bought and it is, um, it is an excellent restaurant. We, we thought it was very good in terms of both food and service. I mean, a big drawback for it is the price. Uh, it came out to almost, uh, $900, uh, in the current, um, exchange rate and $900 for lunch is, is a shovel of money. The time we paid that kind of money, it was for dinner at the at Meadowood in Napa Valley. And that was a three Michelin star restaurant. And um, it, was, it, was, it was a similar price. It was a lot more fussy than this one though. On the plus side, the um, Club Club has great food and really attentive staff. I mean, these are professional wait staff and they know what they're doing and they are really good at explaining everything. And they are courteous without being obsequious. Um, which is, you know, a fine line, and uh, I thought they were very good, and they really made the place extra special. We also liked that um, the whole decor and ambiance of the place was elegant but casual. Um, people were uh, dressed in, in, in business suits or they were dressed in hipster casual. It, there was no dress code, and the room was light and bright, and the cooking and the service was right in the front as part of the dining area. There was no kitchen hidden, hidden away in the back, etc. So we really liked that level of informal um, service, but also maintaining at the same time elegance. I don't necessarily know if um, that what you pay for something is worth what you pay for it. Well, in this case, I thought the food and service were special, and I can see that you have to pay to get that level of quality ingredients as well as professional wait staff who knew what they were doing. The sommelier knew everything. The waiters, you know, were totally on the ball. So that's it. Thank you for joining me at this look at the Clove Club in London. If you liked what you saw, remember to click like, like and subscribe and we'll bring you more food and travel and travel related stuff from around the world. Thank you very much. See you soon.